What is greener or environmentally preferable? A ceramic mug or a paper cup? An electric car or a traditional car? Hello, my name is Stefano Kukuraki and I'm assistant professor at Leiden University at the Institute of Environmental Sciences, CML. My area of expertise is industrial ecology. And today I will be talking about one of the key methods of the field of industrial ecology, life cycle assessment, or in short, LCA. I will introduce some basic concepts of LCA. I will give you some examples of common use. I will discuss the various standard phases of LCA and then conclude with the bene benefits of a life cycle approach. The answer to my opening question is not trivial, as the systems under assessment can easily trigger a cascade of processes that are highly interconnected and are dispersed across the global economy. Try to imagine undoubtedly more complex systems than mugs and cups, such as alternative designs for power plants, alternative transportation means to travel from your home to work. What about designs for rockets used in space missions? What is the function of the systems under assessment? How many times will the system be used? Where were the resources extracted? How long will the system under assessment last? We need to take a systems or life cycle approach and consider trade-offs to answer these questions. The term life cycle refers to the consecutive and interlinked stages of a product or service system, from raw material extraction or generation from natural resources to final disposal and end of life. Life cycle assessment is a quantitative methodological framework that allows linking the life cycle of a system to a spectrum of potential environmental impacts. Consider, for example, the manufacturing stage in the life cycle of a product. In order to produce X unit of this product, we need the product to be processed by a factory. In order to produce the required output, a number of inputs are needed. These inputs are, for instance, the energy required to run the machines, say electricity from wind energy or natural gas, and include some natural resources as well, water and land, for instance. Some maintenance operations will be needed occasionally, as well as capital investments and inputs from other sectors of the economy. All of these inputs and exchanges with the natural environment and the related emissions will have impacts. On human health, for instance, because of emissions of CO2 or toxic substances, or on the natural environment through emissions to water and soil. These impacts will be directly related to the output of the manufacturing operations. What I've just briefly assessed is one of the stages of a life cycle. This stage will be connected to others that are simultaneously assessed in an LCA study. Let us consider an illustrative example. Think of the rare earths, a class of critical raw materials that are used in our mobile phones or laptops, or in transportation or energy technologies. Rare earths are mined in selected places across the globe using heavy machinery and considerable inputs of energy. Natural resources like water are used in the mining process and toxic chemicals are also released. Furthermore, energy intensive processes are used to refine the ore minerals and take metallic forms of the metals for general use. Sub subsequent processes of powder metallurgy are then used to transform the materials into subcomponents that are used in final products. All of these would be included in a life cycle assessment of product systems containing rare earths. LCA studies assess environmental impacts across such an intricate network of input and output relationships and exchanges with the natural environment. These relationships and exchanges are assessed from the moment of design and development of the system through the extraction of raw materials and their processing. Then we further consider additional manufacturing steps and operations that are required to assemble the various components of the system. We also include the distribution network and the use phase through the way, uh, thus the way in which potential user will interact with the system. Say an adunim a neodymium magnet is compared to a samarium cobalt magnet. How long will each last if exposed to low temperatures? How many grams of critical materials will be used? Finally, the end-of-life options for a certain system will be also assessed, together with the related environmental impacts. Will the rare earths used in a mobile phone be recycled? What are the benefits of such an activity as compared to incineration, for instance? The ISO standard 1440-2006 describes the, principle, the principles and framework for LCA. The standard includes the definition of the goal and scope of the LCA study, 
the Lifecycle Inventory Analysis, LCI, the Lifecycle Impact Assessment phase, and the Lifecycle Interpretation phase, among other methodological aspects. I will briefly analyze some of these phases in turn. In the Goal and Scope phase, the aim of the study is defined and the related questions are framed. Questions such as, what is the intended application of the results are answered here. The function of the systems assessed is defined here. LCA studies typically conduct comparisons based on functionality. For example, alternative cars are compared based on the delivery of one kilometer of driving over a specific period of time over a specific distance. This unit of comparison is called functional unit and it is a quantitative description of the function fulfilled by the system under assessment. The system boundaries are also set during this phase of the LCA study. Given the complexity of the input-output interactions that we have earlier sketched, choices need to be made and some parts of the system will need to be cut off from the analysis. In the life cycle inventory phase, the product system is modeled as a collection of connecting activities and operations, defined as unit processes, which contribute to deliver the functional unit. Unit processes can be a specific manufacturing step or even related activities like maintenance, cleaning, waste treatment or disposal, just like the manufacturing stage I've shown you before, with its inputs, outputs and related emissions. All of these contribute to allow the system to perform its function, and unit processes need to be scaled to the functional unit. Product systems can involve thousands of unit processes. Existing databases are used for commonly used upstream processes such as electricity generation, copper mining, while direct data collection is needed for other more le relevant processes in the foreground. Once the inventory problem is solved, the magnitude and significance of the potential environmental impacts of the systems under assessment can be evaluated during the life cycle impact assessment phase. Impact scores are calculated using existing models that draw on the best available methods and scientific cons consensus to estimate transport, fate, effect and potential damages of the inventory emissions. Standard LCA software will automatically connect the inventory data to the right factors for the characterization of emissions. Impact scores are then calculated across a spectrum of impact categories, which include global warming, toxicity, acidification, among many others. Finally, the last phase I will discuss is that of interpretation of results. LCA studies rely as you can imagine, on extensive data to represent very complex economic systems. Data are not always accurate or available, and assumptions about average conditions across wide geographical regions are required. Additional analysis are required to interpret the results, to assess the importance of assumptions, to study admissions across the life cycle, and to assess the uncertainty of the data used. All of these very important aspects are part of the interpretation phase of LCA. By considering the full life cycle of product systems, LCA allows avoiding the shifting of burdens from one place in the globe to another or from one stage of the life cycle to the next. In comparative assessments, alternative design choices can also be compared and alternative policy scenarios implemented to test, to test their benefits on reducing environmental impacts. Take the example here. Wind turbines do not have emissions during the use phase. They could be considered as a truly green technology. However, a system of unit processes and complex interactions is triggered to put wind turbines in place and to produce electricity from wind power. Thus, this system triggers a variety of impacts across the full life cycle. This is because material resources and natural resources are used in these complex systems all of which do have impacts that can be assessed using LCA. This makes LCA the method of choice when alternative solutions for sustainable development need to be compared.